Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. Each Sunday I post a video and this could either be a real-time demo, it could be a tutorial, it could be a plein air adventure, or sometimes a combination of all three. I paint quite a wide range of subjects including animals, landscapes and portraits, and I use a reasonably wide range of media as well, including conventional acrylic, interactive acrylic, watercolour, ink tents, pencil, biro, alcohol markers, sharpie markers, and sometimes I just combine all of these. So this week we're up at Hardwick Hall in England. Uh, this is an Elizabethan manor house built in the 1500s in beautiful grounds. And you can see top left there. That's the reference I'm going to use. So it's a view along quite a, quite a long straight path hedge on one side, some shrubbery and trees on the left, and then beyond hedges in the distance we can see the, the manor house Hardwick Hall itself. So this is just a little watercolour sketch on A4 mixed media paper. And as you can see I'm flooding uh, the sky and the right hand side where I've got that dark shadow on the, the right hand head, hedge with uh, a wash of ultramarine blue having previously put down a kind of grey purple wash on the path there. So I'm using the big round synthetic mop, uh, mop brush that I often use for watercolour and the reason I like that one is it holds a lot of paint. You can cover a large area even though I'm working quite small today you can still cover a large area but it does come to a really good point so it's pretty good for you know some detailed work here and there as well as long as you don't want to get too fussy and one of the things I hope to do in the near future on the channel is some kind of gestural sketching with this brush on on much bigger paper now while that wash is still wet you can see I'm rolling a little bit of purple through the blue wash which isn't really representative of the sky in the reference but not really the point of the sketch today I'm just kind of having a little bit of fun being expressive so I want to capture something of the scene but do but doing so in my own way so here we've got a mix of alizarin crimson and a bit of cadmium yellow so quite a weak wash I've switched to a smaller synthetic round and I was just using that on its side in order to block in the silhouette of the building. Now often I don't even bother with a pencil sketch but in this particular case as you can see I've used a 7B pencil to just put in the basic structure of the Hardwick Hall and the gardens. I think I mainly did that in this particular case because, because I was working fairly small and I did want to keep the proportions in check. There's not quite as much room for error if you're working at a four size which is about 11 inches by eight inches if i was working you know four times that size i could kind of make a bit of a mistake and pull it back and adjust the painting but there's quite a lot going on in the small picture frame we've got here so just you know had to be a little bit more precise in terms of placing things within the page and um, while i was chatting away there i added with a mid-sized brush i added a wash of light green and now you can see I'm working wet in wet, adding some dark green and using the water spray, adding a little bit of texture to those washes. And I can now use that same colour over the preliminary wash that I put down earlier. And you can see that's creating a nice dark shadow. Again, coming in with the water spray here and there just to create a little bit of a random element. That's often a good thing to do, I find, when you're depicting foliage you know, which is basically fractal in nature and certainly has a lot of random stuff going on. Impossible to paint manually um, or consciously, much better to let the watercolour do its own thing. So really, I'm just looking at the very big shapes on the left here, not trying to copy them exactly, just trying to mimic the general pattern of light and shadow. And now this particular tree I'm putting in here is you know it's pretty much of my invention just to break up the skyline a bit um, and also to so I've got a pale bit of foliage on the left there off in the slight distance and then that darker shadow is a little bit more in the foreground so it's just helping to create layers rather than trying to copy exactly what is there 
So coming in with a darker purple now, a different shadow color. And I can use that for some of the cast shadows which are falling across the pathway. So one of the things to think about here is because we want to create a sense of perspective, you can see I used quite narrow lines on the pathway in the sort of middle distance, but in the foreground, I've made the lines and the marks quite a bit thicker. And you can also think about the gaps you leave between those lines, those little bits of light which are peeking through within the shadows. Regardless of what they're like in the reference, you can use those to create a sense of perspective. So you can have big patches of light in the foreground and then smaller patches of light off in the distance. Notice how I blended that cast shadow up into the base of the hedge, bottom right hand corner of the painting as well. One of the reasons I like painting uh, these sort of stately homes and things occasionally is I actually visited this uh, building and its grounds back in September 2019. So where are we now? Uh, we're sort of middle of 2021. So it's sort of 18 months ago, maybe a little bit more. Um, and I had a great day, you know, it's a really brilliant place, uh, incredibly beautiful, lots of history. And it was beautiful weather as well, which, you know, is far from guaranteed in September up in the up in the north of England. But I haven't really thought about it too much since. So when I'm there, I don't spend a lot of time filming and taking photographs, but I do take a few, you know, just for the memory, like most people. I take a little little bits of footage as well. So one of the reasons I like doing these quick sketches is, you know, rather than just look at the photos again, in t by kind of painting the thing, it kind of helps refresh my memory of the day and helps me just gives an added an added dimension to the memory really so it's something I enjoy for that reason as well as just the fact that you know I'm creating a painting which obviously I love to do on a regular basis so while I was chatting away there come back in with my small round brush and I've, I've gone with purple again not too dissimilar a color to what I used for the cast shadows on the path but applying it just a little bit more faintly and you can see I'm picking out just a few key lines here and there, and then also the areas of large shadow on the right. In particular, there's that angled shadow which goes across the right hand tower. So those cast shadows on buildings are often very, very helpful in creating a sense of three dimensions of the structure, especially when you're looking at a building head on, as I am here. There aren't really too many perspective angles from the building itself. It's just a series of parallel planes which are completely perpendicular to our line of sight. So the shadows really help to create a sense of three dimensions. Now on top of each of the towers, there's quite a lot of complexity, carvings and stuff. And if memory serves me correctly, I might have got this wrong, but I think there were even some there might even have been some lettering. I'd have to I'd have to look in more detail at the photos. But I don't want to replicate that in detail. So you can see I've just used some random squiggles, um, some wiggly lines going across the top of each tower. And um, when I move my hand in a moment, if you look at the left hand uh, foliage just next to the path, you can see I've got some cauliflowers forming. So here's a better look at the the kind of carvings or the uh, ornate stonework up on top of the towers. But going back to the cauliflowers on the left of the path there, um, you can see this one cut, well, one or two forming there. And there's also one almost opposite on the right hand side of the path as well. So I'll probably end up leaving those because, you know, a cauliflower within watercolour, it can kind of look like a plant or a bush or a bit of shrubbery. So, you know, why not take advantage of that effect? Now, in terms of these windows, there are multiple panes within each rectangular window. That's a lot of fiddling around, so I'm not worrying about that. I'm just kind of putting in three vertical lines, three or four vertical lines for each window with a light blue, more or less dry brushing it on so that I get uh, a bit of a broken brush mark. And that's hopefully going to help create a sense of there's a bit more going on there than there would be if I just bl blocked in a solid rectangle. So a lot of sketching or watercolor work or painting of any kind drawing of any kind you don't have to describe completely what's going on if you don't want to and in fact you can almost create your own little 
kind of language of the brush. You sort of think of these little um, shortcuts in terms of your mark making. In a sense, you could think of it as calligraphy, I guess. So it's worth experimenting with different marks you could make to describe a window. You know, what's the minimum I could do? Could I go horizontally or diagonally to describe a window? Back in with a flat synthetic now, and uh, I think this is a little filbert, so it's got a rounded end, bit of dry brush with a dark green, just to add a little bit of a different texture, a bit of a rougher, more firm texture to this foreground tree or hedge or whatever it is. And then also putting a bit of that same texture in on the right hand side in the foreground too. So we can think about textures as well in terms of creating a sense of depth. And in particular, because here I used a bit of dry brush on the distant building, that's the most kind of rough texture I had in the painting at that point. And we don't want too much of that for the most distant object. So I need to balance that out by having some dark rough texture in the foreground. So we're getting a nice mix of textures now. We've got some kind of dry brush effects on the building and in the foreground, we've got some softer washes. And you can see I'm just putting a little bit of uh, dry brush texture off on that distant bush and, you know, a little bit more in the foreground on the left. So it's just kind of trying to balance out the textures across the frame of the painting. So back in with a small brush. And here I'm using just a little bit of pure titanium white. And this is not um, watercolor. This is actually interactive acrylic. You could use normal acrylic. The reason I use the interactives is because the interactives, even if they're touch dry, uh, you can spray them with water and just move them around or blend them a little bit. Now, you know, I would obviously want, want to avoid doing that on a watercolour painting because if I sprayed the thing with water and scrubbed too hard with a brush, I could lift off some of the watercolour. But the interactives are just a little bit more forgiving than the conventional acrylics. So if I did have to lift a bit off, then I could probably get away with that. But what I'm actually doing with this little liner or rigger brush that um, I'm using is I'm just putting on some highlights on the building. So, you know, it's not, they're not as enhanced as I'm doing them in the reference. And, you know, there's a little bit of artistic license going on here, but I'm just trying to make the building pop a little bit more. I'm adding some little hints of light on the windows, on the little carvings on top of the towers, and wherever there's, um, you know, perhaps a little ledge on the building, all of that stuff combined with the shadows, it's just a simple way of adding to the sense of three dimensions. Now, you, you know, you'll notice that, you know, for this building, which is very much a set of rectangles, whether it's the towers, the walls or the windows, I haven't used a, ru a ruler at all. I haven't used a ruler at all. And Consequently, my lines are a little bit wobbly or angled in some places, but I generally speaking like doing that for buildings. I think as long as I keep things reasonably balanced, it adds a little bit of character. Nothing against using a ruler. Um, you know, I've seen several artists whose work I admire greatly and, you know, they use a ruler quite a lot. Um, they just run the paintbrush down the edge of the ruler. Um, yeah, so perhaps it's something I should try a bit more in the future. So back to a small brush now, and what I'm doing is I'm just hinting at a few flowers here by putting in simply little dots of colour. And I'll vary that colour and also the marks I'm making, both in terms of the size of the dot, the shape of the dot. So you can do that simply by pushing harder or softer and changing the angle at which the brush touches the paper. And I also put in just a few little fine lines there as well. But really, all I'm doing is creating a little bit of texture in the foreground, which is different to what else I've got. I'm not, I'm not painting flowers as such. So then I can continue doing that with a different colour, so going from the sort of bluey greens over to the reds. And I can continue that little pattern of dots overlapping some of the background washes and that foreground tree on the left as well. 
And then having done those two dark colors, we can add some lighter color with a yellow. And then again, in terms of balancing the textures out, left and right hand side of the paintings, a little couple of splashes of yellow in that bottom right hand corner against the rather dark purpley and dark green washes of that big hedge. It's a nice little bit of contrast. And then back to the interactive acrylic for a few little dots of white as well. Now, if you look at the reference photo right at the end of the path, you can see that that central hedge is somewhat darker than the hedge on the right. So just coming in with a larger brush now and slightly darkening the hedge in my painting, just to kind of make that bit of light on the right hand, he right hand hedge, that's difficult to say, make that pop just a little bit more. But I don't want to make the green that I'm putting on at the moment too dark because I still want it to seem off in the distance. And I'm just adding a few little touches with the end of the brush there. That's what I was just doing to kind of just create a little bit of a ragged edge, but, but, but an edge which is different to the ragged edge on the far right in the foreground. And then, you know, it's all pretty cool pinks uh, I've got for the building. So I just thought I'd add a little bit of warmth with a, a um, it's kind of a yellow ochre I'm using here, but I will have mi I've mixed that up with some of the alizarin and the cad yellow. So if you want to check out the painting, you can head to my website and type Hardwick Hall or just Hardwick into the search box. I'll put the link in the description below as usual. And then if you hover over the image on the website, you can see these green boxes appear. And if you actually click on those green boxes, then it will zoom in and give you a full resolution preview of that part of the painting. So you can look at the brushwork and stuff. If you want to check out a print of different sizes and frame types, then obviously you can do that as well. And I've got tons of um, images up on the website. I'm about 10 away from my thousandth upload, so I'm getting excited. That's kind of a little milestone I set myself. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you next Sunday for the next episode of the Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.